Welcome back to Homeowner Maintenance 101 with your new DR Horton Hall. This segment I am going to go over your furnace system so you can understand both the heating and the cooling of the furnace that is supplied with your home. First off, uh, your furnace is controlled electrically, so one of the most important switches in your house is going to be this switch right here. It does say furnace on or off. If you shut this furnace, furnace switch off, you basically have no power to your furnace. Your thermostat is dead upstairs. There's nothing showing on your thermostat. So, what do I do in case of a coming home from work? It's cold in my house in the, in the winter, warm in my house in the summer. Basically, first things you want to do is actually check your thermostat upstairs, which is a programmable setback thermostat. Heat, cool, fan on or off. Either way, you should be able to read the digits on there. If there's no power, in a different segment, we'll show your electrical panel is that you can go to see that the circuit breaker is tripped or not. But in this segment, what I would have you do is I'd have you come down here to make sure that this switch is on. When this switch is off, again, your thermostat upstairs is blank. So I'm going to turn it back on for you. Basically, children think this is a light switch, adults think this is a light switch, and that's why we label it furnace on and off. The only time that you should honestly have to shut this switch off is when you change your furnace filter, and I will go through that here in a second. So you come home from work, it's the middle of summer, and it's hot in your house, but the air conditioner's not working. You come down here, you check that the switch is on, the switch is on. But for some reason, the furnace is not cool in your house. The next thing you should check is your furnace filter. Your furnace filter is a 16 by 25 by 1, and it does show the airflow going into your furnace. It's also listed on here for you. This is a magnetic strip that will cover the filter. I would recommend here at Deer Horton that you change out your filter once a month. Buying the most inexpensive filter you can buy, basically one that you can see through. And here again, the only time you should have to shut off your furnace is to replace your furnace filter. So I pull it up. This filter will show the airflow 16 by 25 by 1. And I also date mine. So I know when I'm coming through here in the month of March, I've already replaced it. If I'm coming through the month of April, that means I should replace it. The recommendation is that your furnace filter gets replaced by you once a month for as long as you live in this house. That way you're getting the particles out of the air that will cause uh, dust or debris inside your furnace. Buy the cheapest ones possible. Buy the blue ones or these, which are very efficient if you replace them monthly. If you do not replace them monthly, what will happen is this filter will get clogged, it will restrict the airflow going into the furnace, and thus shutting your furnace down because it cannot be energy efficient as it is described in the energy efficient code sticker. This is a 92% sealed combustion furnace. So if it does shut down and your switch is on and you're not getting air conditioning or heating, if you make a phone call to probably the most important phone number in your house, you set that right back on there for you. The most important phone number in your house is going to be your HVAC company. In this house, it's Sabre. Sabre Plumbing, Heating, and HVAC out of Plymouth. When you call them, and you're going to say that I have no air conditioning or I don't have any heat in the winter, air conditioning is not an emergency. No heat in the winter is an emergency. So if you call them in the summer, they will get you in line for a service call. But they're going to ask you some questions first. First thing they're going to ask you is, in the electrical panel in your basement or in your garage, has the breaker tripped? Second thing they're going to ask you is your furnace switch on or off. Third thing they're going to ask you is when is the last time that you changed your furnace filter. So they're going to walk you through some processes to make sure that they're not sending a service person out here who is basically going to flip a switch on or change a filter for you and then hand you a service invoice for doing a non workable work. Again, go back to your service manual that was presented to you on your thumb drive from your sales agent to follow the rules of checking this before you make that phone call. But if you have no heat, you have no cooling, this is part of your two-year warranty with DR Horton to give them a call and say, hey, I have no heat and I have no cooling. Um, setback thermostat upstairs for you so you can program it. You can turn it up or down based on when you wake up, when you go to work, when you come home from work, and when you go to bed. Um, so that's all programmable through the thermostat upstairs. Uh, we also give you a sticker here that you can track your furnace filters. Uh, you're changing how often you do them. You can purchase your furnace filters, Home Depot, Menards, Lowell's, Costco's, Mill Street Farm, big box stores, or you can call Saver also to have your filters delivered to you at a cost to the homeowner. Inside of this little sleeve are information that we'll go through with your April air, 
We'll go through with your air exchanger. We'll go through different products, but this is for your service deck, so just leave it right where it is. Um, again, 16 by 25 airflow, 16 by 25 airflow, doing that monthly. Um, I'm going to turn the switch back on. Again, I don't want to leave without no power. Uh, I'm going to walk you through some things here that are good information for you if you like, and it's just kind of general directions and information. We label all of our gas lines, so we have water heater. This is a uh, whole house gas shut off, so this is your main shut off. When a shut off is going with the line, it is off. When it is against the line, it is off. So this is on, and this is off. Same thing will work for your water system when we go through that too. Regulator, again, label gas line to your water heater, gas line to your range, gas line to your fireplace, and then at the end of the line, gas line always goes into your furnace. 92% sealed combustion furnace. Uh, you no longer have a, uh, a chimney, you have intake and exhaust, so that's what these two white pipes are. So if you see steam coming out of your house, it's either coming from your water heater exhaust or from your furnace exhaust. Your two over here are your air conditioner line sets. These are all set up. When you close in your house and you move in, your air conditioner will be operational and be ready to go. So there's no need to worry about it come May or June when the temperatures go up. This is by code an auxiliary source of heat that is in your basement or air conditioning, basically supply for your furnace. We recommend a DR Horton trying to keep it closed because you'd rather send air conditioning up to your rooms and heat up to your rooms. But if you would need it, you are able to open it and you are able to close it. Air conditioner is set in here. This is your eight coil. So this is where air conditioning gets done for your house. And then part of your eight coil is compensation because you are running a cold piece of metal with warm air going through it, you're going to condense moisture. So that's why we have the white small PVC lines that are coming from both your furnace, your air conditioner, and from your air cooler, which I'll go through in a second. And that is all going down to your floor drain. Kind of like when you run your car in the summer. You have a little puddle of water underneath your car from your air conditioner running, and that's what we're doing with these. If for some reason you'd see water coming from the joints or anything, again, that would be a warrantable service call that you could submit a warranty request uh, at DR Horton's website, drhorton.com, underneath the warranty section, and we will come out and visit with you personally, make sure that we identify what the warranty information is that we need to pass on, to the said company in this place, it would be Sailor Plumbing and Heating. If you have any questions, if you don't understand and you still have questions, please feel free to check your thumb drive underneath your warranty or contact your DR Horton Job Suit for his information to give you a little bit more information on this.